Happy Wednesday! Thanks for joining me here tonight. We are continuing on the Verona block. So this is for the Aurifil block of the month and I think we will probably finish this today. Uh, so thanks for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. I'm here for about an hour and I work on projects from beginning to end. So you can be part of the whole process along the way. Right now we are, this this week we are working through the Aurifil block of the month for April. So every fourth full week of the month is when we work on the Aurifil uh, block of the month, the quilt along. So Aurifil is the uh, thread company that makes these fun spools of thread here. And uh, they put on a block of the month quilt along uh, for the year. And my block, I get to actually participate in this uh, this year. So my block is going to be July. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we are on we are on March's block. No, we're on April's block. This is April's block. Um, <laughs> we're, April just went like voosh. <laughs> and we're going to be into May already, which is crazy. But uh, this is the end of April, so this is April's block here. We have a little bit of embroidery to do yet. So here is the original one. We have some embroidery to do up in the corner there, and we're going to write Verona right on it as well. So we'll get that embroidery going, and we'll get it transferred and probably stitched, I'm hoping, uh, tonight. If not, we'll finish it up tomorrow. So uh, we'll we'll definitely have the extra day. And it's actually, actually Friday is the first Friday of the new month. <laughs> it's the first. So uh, every first Friday of the month, we stop whatever we're working on, pull out an old project, and work on that instead. So it is, uh, it, it, we call it Finish It Friday. So that's the first Friday of every month. Happens to be this week for for May. So uh, I think this will be great. We'll finish this just in time to pull out something for Finish It Friday. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions. We'll see. We'll, you know, I'm getting racking up more and more unfinished projects. So <laughs> we'll have something. But uh, just a reminder, that also means that this is the last uh, week till Thursday uh, for the current embroidery of the month. Uh, it is the sloth pattern. I also have the tiger pattern up there. The tiger might stay maybe uh, till mid-month next month because I did release that one late. But the sloth will be going away uh, at the end of the month and we will have a new embroidery. So that is coming up um, on Friday, right? Friday's the first. Whenever, whenever this week is over. Yeah, Friday. Friday is when that will that will happen. Oh, Bonnie, the koala binding. You know what? Now that you say that, that is what I had in my head that I would be working on. So we will work on the koala quilt binding again on, on Friday. So uh, all we have is the binding left. Uh, this is the quilt that all you guys made koalas for and sent for sent them to me. Uh, I still would like to do some sort of auction. I don't have that figured out yet. This, the, this COVID stuff kind of took that over a little bit, but I do still want to help raise money for Australians for animals. Um, and we, we already donated uh, a bit and um, I'd like this quilt uh, to um, act as a way that we can donate more. So uh, yeah, great. We'll do that on Friday. All right, I'm gonna flip you around. Let's get going here tonight. There's the crazy bin. That'll have to get cleaned up. But here is our state of the state right here. So uh, we, after much to do, we got we got um, the this whole piece, the cityscape, uh, fused to fused to our piece. So here here again is. Uh, what it should look like and uh, uh, we have some embroidery there and there uh, but we're doing it in like a trapunto way like a fake trapunto so trapunto is like a stuffed embroidery almost like you like you stitch something and then you cut out the back and stuff it this is kind of like a uh, like a fake way of doing it a, a faux way of doing it so we are going to put a little piece of batting on the back and then stitch 
stitch our little shape in. And then we also have to stitch uh, Verona in there as well. And we talked about last night maybe making that pink. So it would kind of go together with this pink a little bit more, like Verona and pink right there. Uh, so I snagged a little bit of batting. <laughs> this is literally from a scrap. I tore it off of the scrap. You know, sometimes you'll have a, like a long strip of batting after you trim a batting for the quilt. And this, this was a saved piece from there. I tore it off. I think this is going to be just right for the batting. I might even double it up just to make it extra poofy, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and I think I'm going to hand, I'm going to hand stitch this all, uh, tonight. So first, what I want to do is transfer my design, and I think, uh, so this is that template that we put together. I think I'm going to try and transfer this with some of this Serral wax-free transfer paper. Uh, this is the sampler that has uh, five different colors. I've had this probably for a decade uh, and I and I can still use it so I didn't I didn't put it in the product list below but uh, here it is if you wanted to just take a screen grab or something uh, why I think I'm gonna use this is especially for this Verona I'm gonna be transferring to a to a dark color here this is a little squishy so I don't know if it's gonna work very well but I, I'm gonna try and use the white there's white, uh, oh, right here, white transfer paper. So I will just kind of trace over this design and it should transfer it into white here. And it's just kind of chalky, so it will kind of come off after a little while. And I thought I would do that up here as well. So I think that might be the first thing I do. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to transfer it one at a time just because... I think handling one, I might rub off the, the second one. This one might actually be, I might be able to just trace this through, which would be ideal. And now see here, it still, it has that dark color up there. So dark colors can be a little tricky. Why don't we try them both with this paper, the Cyril, uh paper. So I'm just kind of lining up my uh, motif with the corner trying to kind of match up where it is. So I think that looks, I think that looks pretty good. Oh, you have the gray Cyril. Oh, you need some white. Yeah. So Robin, I like this, uh, the sampler pack, uh, the sampler. So it has a bunch of different colors and every once in a while, man, these other colors do come in handy. Uh, let's, let's find the white. I suspect white is probably what I use the most. <laughs> yeah, like you can see all my old old designs on there. We got we got part of a bunny. <laughs> we got a um so this is from when I wrote my book a while ago. So I have a bunch of farm animals in the book. So I have a whole barn here. Uh a little a little, little guy there with a heart on his butt. <laughs> so even with all of this on, I can still use it. All right, so this is kind of like the freezer paper where one side is a little kind of glossier and one feels more like paper. That kind of glossy side we're gonna put down. Oh, but you know what? I'm gonna use, I'm gonna save the white for this Verona. I'm gonna use a darker color for our little sun up there. Maybe we'll try the blue, how about that? Maybe we'll just do the red. Then it, it's kind of that same pink color. I don't, I'm not sure I've even used the red. Oh, look, this is a fresh sheet. Let's do this. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put that red side down. Kind of like that. So I am kind of going over a few seams. So this might be a little goofy, but we'll see. Uh, so you can use a stylus, but all I'm going to use is a, uh, just a mechanical pencil that I, I push the lead down. So I just kind of have like this big nubbin here. That's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to get down here. Oh, you have some of one of these from, from some painting days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I, I think, um, I might have had this paper for some other reason before I started doing embroidery stuff. So it really is, is, um, is old. I found some solufilm wash away embroidery stabler, uh, stabilizer. Um, 
I think so, Kathy. So I have not used that brand, but I, I, I've heard of it, and I think that is the same. I use the Selkie Stick and Stitch. So what you want to know is how does it go on and how does it come off for an embroidery stabilizer? So um, how it goes off, it sounds like, is wash away, so that should work well. Um, it just might not stick on like a sticker, uh, so you might have to like pin it on or something. All right, so I am just putting pressure. I'm just tracing around. You know, you could even use a ballpoint pen because then you can kind of see where you've been, which is helpful. Um, this is just going around and around and around, so I don't think we need to worry about it. You need to do this on a hard surface and it won't work on squishy fabric like felt or something like that. Uh, Cause it's just too squishy. You need like the hardness of the table to um, transfer it. And I'm a little nervous about the Verona just because that is um, a little squishy, but I think, I think we'll get it enough that we'll be able to figure it out. So now this this should just wash away, or it actually should just kind of like brush away after a little while, because it's just kind of chalky. Hopefully this is working. I didn't I didn't check to see if it was working. I am going over several seams. Yeah, you could free motion quilt this. You could easily just go around and around and around. I think this is just implied to just go around in a circle. Um, like her design isn't perfectly exactly like this. Well, actually it is because I think she traced her finished design. Um, but yeah. Oh, put freezer paper under Verona. Oh, that could help make it stiff. That's true. All right, let's see how this worked. I'm actually going to hold this down and just peek. Oh, yeah. That's working just fine. And I think the red was... The way to go here as well just because it kind of matches so what's interesting is it didn't show up quite so well on this fabric i might just with my pencil here draw in a little bit of the line here i can see it enough but i think it'll help me just a hair to see it a little bit more and we're going to be stitching over this so it's fine that i'm just using my pencil here but it sure showed up really well on this fabric, and I think that red color was a good choice. But there we go. So that's that's transferred. So I think I'm just going to start in the middle and go around and around and around. Or I could start on the outside. I'm going to start on the outside because then I'm touching. Like if I start on the inside, my hand will be rubbing against the rest of it. So I think I'll start on the outside, um, and then hopefully I'll I'll just like touch it as I go. All right. The one thing we are we don't have yet is the batting here. So I think I, I'm going to just do double. Uh, I don't do this often, so this will be kind of interesting. Uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to pin this in place. So I'm going to try and lay it right underneath my design here. I mean, I, I should have maybe tore a little bit larger piece in this. Uh, one layer would have been easy, but I think the two layers will be kind of fun. It's just going to make my whole thing look poofy like all my stitches will look a little poofed up and I think that'll be kind of fun um, so I'm gonna just try and lay this behind here and pin it and then we'll trim it um, we'll trim it after we're done here and yeah you know what I I think I will just trim this up too so um, none of those fuzzles come come to the front all right so let's just place this behind. We gotta pick, gotta pick some color here yet too. So this is supposed to be a little sunsetty, isn't it? Uh, maybe this is where we get our mauve. <laughs> I, I only brought, so I, I brought some uh, floss up here. Oh, I do actually have kind of a mauve. Uh, I'll I'll open that up. I um, I just brought my kind of pink, pink, pink looking fabric up. So we'll have to pick something from there. All right, I think, I think I'm all the way around the design here. So I'm just going to put a pin in the top where I can feel the batting. I hate s embroidering with pins everywhere because my thread catches on it, but uh, I think we'll be fine. I wonder if I should do, yeah, we're just gonna do here and here. 
two points. So, so now this you could machine embroider on your uh, sewing machine. That's totally fine. Uh, we just kind of thought maybe stitching the Verona and then this would be kind of nice. I have to change my machine to do machine embroidery or like free motion quilting uh, because my machine here won't, won't do that. Um, I can't lower the feed dogs. I'd have to take them out and that's too much of a big deal. So I thought I'd just hand do it. All right, so let's, let's pick some colors here. Uh, I would, since we try to do mauve this whole time, it would be kind of nice to do a mauve. Um, maybe it would blend in too much, but maybe I kind of like that. Maybe it should be kind of um, mauve-ish. Uh, the other option is I could, you know, it could be a little sunnier. Like I do like kind of these sunny bits. That's, that's, I mean, I don't know, maybe more like, like a coral color. But for some reason, I, I like the idea of this mauve. I got some other kind of mauve-ish things going on here. This is actually pretty close to um, this color. Oh, I, I, yeah, didn't we learn to uh, use applique pins on the back to avoid, oh yeah, we could do, well, I am doing hand embroidery and I'd rather be able to see the pointy end <laughs> uh, versus it stabbing me. You know, I do kind of, I think I'm gonna, gonna just go with this. It's an ode to us trying, <laughs> trying to do the, the uh, mauve. So now this is linen. I, I know that because I put an L on here back in the day when I got this. So this isn't going to be quite as shiny as like this one, for example. But I do think that purple might show up a little bit more. Maybe we just use all six strands. We could do that. Ooh, that might be a little tough to stitch through. Well, here we go. Let's Let's look at it this way. Just look at it with like one strand. So that's what... That's what this color would look like. Actually, we could just use kind of like a purple too. Oh, this is linen as well. Do I have a non-linen version of this? No, these are like the same same thing. I guess this doesn't look as sunny anymore. Yeah, that looks just gray against that color. Let's see what this looks like. Now that maybe blends in too much. I don't think, I think you wouldn't even be able to see it. So you know what, let's just use this linen. It's a goofy color, but I like it. Oh, I do kind of have like one other darker mauve color. Now that's a, I mean, that's quite dark though, isn't it? That's maybe, I'm thinking that's maybe too dark. It looks like really dark um, from far away. I, I think the, I think I wanted it a little paler. I'm gonna go with this. Uh, that was my first instinct and sometimes that's just the best way to go. Uh, I wonder if what the same color looks like on a dark. So it might look really light down here, which is kind of nice, maybe. Um, so that's what it would look like down here. I think it needs to be lighter. It's kind of blending in too much, isn't it? All right, let's, oh, a really bright yellow. Okay, let's try that. We do have some other yellow stuff going on here. What about like kind of a goldy, goldy yellow? I mean, this would kind of work too. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with the mauve because that's the theme. I mean, I do like the yellow. I do like the idea of the yellow and I think if it was just up to me, I mean, it is just up to me, but <laughs> I would I would do some yellow or orange in here. But the theme for this month is this mauve, and I don't think I I don't think I got it. Um, I don't think I got it. The mauve feeling from my fabric. So this is just kind of an ode to that, and it's subtle. It'll it'll retreat in the background a little bit, which I like. All right, let's let's see if we can find a color. I think I'd like something like this pink to go down here. It's kind of almost an orangey pink. And actually this might not be half bad. That looks like I split it into strands already here. There, I, I think that's light enough. We're gonna do these two colors. All right, at some point you gotta just do it, right? Okay, so 
I think I am gonna use all uh, all six strands here just so it's a little thick. So I'm getting about my 24 inches or so. And I think, should we do this with a hoop? I think I'm gonna do this without a hoop. Okay, um, let me grab a needle. Let's get Zeb out here. He is my little needle holder. All right. So I haven't stitched with this uh, linen in a long time. So uh, linen thread, linen thread kind of tends to rub or like get affected when it gets rubbed through the fabric. So every time you pull it through the fabric, it is like getting a whole pile of friction on it, right? You can already kind of see, I mean, this is old thread. You can already kind of see how it's fuzzy, like it wants to get worn or like it, it's worn a little bit. Um, hopefully it doesn't cause us issues. All right, I'm gonna tie a knot in the front. I am gonna try weaving in my ends eventually. So I'm gonna do my normal away knot. So I'm gonna go about here, uh, or about here, which is a little bit of a ways from where I'm gonna start stitching, but I'm gonna weave in that end later. And what should we even do here? Should we do, should we do a, a back stitch? You know, I was thinking for Verona that we would do like a, like a chain stitch. Um, but I'm wondering if maybe just doing a back stitch for this. I think I'll just do a back stitch. It's my tried and true friend is the back stitch. And I think the back stitch does look nice when you do the, the, the fabric behind it. Oh my gosh. See, that's the, the one problem with, um, with stitching with, uh, six strands of thread is that it gets to be kind of difficult to pull the, pull the needle through. Ugh. If this is the case. We might have to switch. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see how this goes. All right. I might just do it on the table like this. That that was helpful. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually kind of pull on these stitches a little bit because that's gonna give it some of that. Uh, remember, we have the batting behind here, so each stitch is gonna end up being poofy. Uh, it'll it'll make sense when we when we um, start getting around and around. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm doing this, I think I think this little sun might take a little bit of time here. So we might have to stitch the Verona tomorrow. So the smooth of the grain goes in the eye of the needle. Oh, I always, I, I always forget to look at that. Oh yeah, you know what a stem stitch would work? I guess doing a back stitch is kind of pretty similar to doing a stem stitch. You know, I am rotating it back and forth just because it is easier for me to pull while it's on the table. Let's see if I can... Yeah, I mean, the stem stitch is basically the same as me doing doing the back stitch here. Pretty much. Oh, wow, this is just difficult to pull through. I do need to actually stick it on the table to pull. Oh, well, that's gonna be annoying, but you know what? I'm I've made this whole project harder than it needs to be, so I guess let's top it off. Top it off with that. All right, I'm gonna take this pin out. It, I think um, since I have all these stitches here, I don't need it anymore. You know, I could stitch with. Um, with that glove on, then I could probably yank it. <laughs> Should I try that? Let's see. Where's that other size glove? Oh, here. <laughs> okay. I've never done this before, but let's see if this works. So I, I have this uh, sewing glove. It, it's a hair big, but <laughs> I can't feel my needle at all. But I can yank that. Uh, let's see if I can do it holding it holding it up. I can, I can pull the needle through really easily. <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna do this. Yeah, my chalk isn't um, great here. It is going away a little bit, but there is enough for me to see. I'm, I'm trying not to touch it as best I can, but of course I, I'm not great at that. You can already kind of tell it's um, getting a little poofy here. It'll look like that a lot more once we um, get our second loop here. We're going to get it nice and poofy in the middle here. Oh, I could, well, the thimble, oh, I do have those little silicone things, those little finger tips. You're right. I do have that. Let's, let's try that instead. Although this is kind of working. I did, Kathy. I do. I have actually a double layer of batting underneath there. Um, so I think that'll work. So yeah, so I do have these little rubber thimbles. We could try those instead of me putting on the whole glove, right? And I wouldn't normally have this problem, except for that, um, let's just try it with the one, except for that I am stitching all six strands. Let's see if I can just do it with one. All six strands through, um, through quilting weight fabric. So quilting weight fabric is pretty tightly woven, and six strands... Of thread is quite a bit to pull through. Ooh, I think this is too slippery yet. You know what? I'm going back to my giant glove. You know, I could just lay it on the table and do it too. That was working fine. Maybe I'll just do that. Yeah, usually, usually my embroidery isn't so dramatic as having to put on a work glove and, and everything to do it, but like I said, <laughs> been making this project harder than it needs to be the whole entire time. Oh well. So we will trim away that batting when we're done here. And you know, in theory, in the instructions, it is it's um I think to like free motion quilt this. Go for that. That's totally fine too. But since we are gonna hand embroider the Verona. There's going to be text down here that says Verona. Um, I thought that'd be nice. You know what this is like? This is like morning sunrise. That's what this is like. I'm going to think of this as a sunrise instead of a sunset. Then then the ma this like mauve uh, sun I think is good. <laughs> I, I won't be pulling out the pliers, uh, but I could. <laughs> yeah, this is again one of the reasons why I typically use three strands of thread. Three strands is kind of my go-to. Uh, it still makes kind of a, a pretty thick line, uh, but it's it's easy to stitch through a quilting weight fabric yet. Once you get up to, you know, the five, six strands, it gets to be um, a little tricky in quilting weight fabric. And I also like to stitch on a um, more of like a muslin fabric because a lot of times muslin fabric has a thicker, thicker weave to it. So it's much, much, much easier to pull a needle through. And man, this is going to use up a ton of thread, which is good. I need to use up, use up all that thread. Use up that floss. So I'm taking pretty big stitches here too, but I think that's fine. So we're almost done with our first, first um, floss here. So I'm gonna weave in the ends of that. I, I, I'm really liking this mauve. It's just, I think it's helping this pink. So this pink, I think was maybe a little light, but like I said, it was a tough fabric picking session um, when we did this fabric a couple days ago. I'm gonna remove that pin. 
uh, the the theme for the month. So each of these, each of the Aurifil blocks of the month has a color theme and a city of Italy theme. Uh, so this, this is Verona and uh, its color theme was mauve. And I've made it a rule for my quilt that I'm working on, my, my block of the month here, uh, that I'm going to use only fabrics from this one bin of fat quarter fabrics that I, uh, that I had, um, in, in, uh, just, uh, at my house. And, uh, we could not find, I couldn't find a single thing that related to mauve in there. <laughs> so that was kind of shocking. Uh, I thought I'd have a little bit of everything in there. But, uh, so this is the best we could do. This is supposed to be like a dark mauve, a medium mauve, and a light mauve. That, that did not pan out. So, I did the best I could, I think. We hinted at that pink. These are kind of like dirty-ish colors a little bit. Um, mauve is kind of like a dirty pink almost. Dirty isn't probably the best word. A little duller pink. A lot like this pink. <laughs> you wanna get a little hint of the May embroidery of the month? It's very May-ish, how about that? It's, it's like late May, depending on where you live. <laughs> oh man. Eh, we're gonna have to get gas soon here too. I don't, I don't know what it is by us, but it's definitely, it's probably like in the 150 range, I'm thinking. Oh, Arloa, um, my block for this Aurifil block of the month is July. Ugh, come on. All right. That needs some help right here. Ugh, there. Criminy. All right, I think this is actually going to be my last stitch here. Um, I'm going to weave in the ends. There's our, there's our batting. Okay, so I'm going to weave in this end. And then we had that other end. Uh, I'm going to weave in that as well. And then we'll be, uh, we'll be all set to go for our next color. We could actually probably even trim this already, but I think, I think I'll just leave it for now. I think I definitely underestimated how much embroidery is in this piece. You go around that circle, there's kind of a lot of surface area that you're dealing with. All right, I always weave in the ends to my embroidery. Where'd that knot go? Okay, so here's that knot that we made at the beginning. Oops. Cut that away. There we go. And I'm going to weave in that end. Ooh, it's also harder to put all six strands in the eye of the needle. So there, um, by saving that little bit of a tail, um, now I can weave in this side as well. This is actually kind of more like hand quilting. I could have hand quilted this, couldn't have I? Ooh, Irene, that's a good find. All right, so here's our start. I think uh, you can kind of tell a little bit the poofiness of it, or you will. Um, you know, here we go. We put that little batting behind. This next row, I think, is where we're really going to start seeing the poof. Let's give it a go. Right, I'm getting another like 24 inches or so off of here. It sure is, Jennifer. I guess it depends who you talk to, but um, it seems that way. All 
All right, let's weave in the end here. I always do like three little backs and back and forths. Oh wow, Bonnie. I think we're up in cases today as well. All right, and uh, we'll start back up where we left off. All right, and then we're just gonna go loop de loop de loop de loop. Ah, oh, Gail, it is so nice here too. It started, I mean, yesterday it rained all day and it was a little chilly. Uh, and this morning it was pretty dang chilly as well. But oh, this afternoon was gorgeous. Oh yeah, and Gail, you're just uh, you're just west of us here, um, so we probably got yours towards the end of the day. And yeah, and I think it's supposed to just get nicer and nicer out. So I'm I'm pretty stoked for the weekend. Come on, oh man, you guys. Get the glove on. Ah, there we go. I think our reopening day is the 4th, but that's always changing. I think we might be able to be allowed to do like small manufacturing businesses now. Um, we have not gone back to that yet. We have a few ladies that, that work with us um, a couple times a week in the, in the warehouse. <sighs> there, there, we have a lot of people working from home right now um for penguin and fish like a few well a few people they're helping us make kits and um uh letting you in into the facebook group and and uh stuff like that but i don't know how we're gonna do the office stuff that's we gotta figure all that out yet because i don't know we work pretty close in the office and that is something we have to figure out yet because it'd be nice to have people back it's just been john and me going to the office i'm digging this mauve um this the sun. So even though I wasn't able to find the mob, I can still, still say that this mob was the theme. It's making me feel better <laughs> about, about the block. And I think it kind of blends in well here. Like it's not super overpowering. It's just kind of a, like a subtle detail and I'm liking it so far. Man, it seems like extra difficult to pull this through in this center area. I don't know. Yep, I, we are, that is on the docket, Gretchen, still. Um, the tech guys are just, that's, that's, that's more difficult than it seems, um, but it is on our, our brains of um, an improvement we want to do for sure. I, I think a lot of people would like that. Um, Gretchen's asking for uh, for our the patterns and kits that you buy the patterns to be saved on, like to have an account to log into to access you know your library basically. Ooh, gosh, stabbed myself too. This one I'm gonna need this for. Yes, and the Fuzzle shirt that has actually been on my brain a lot as of late, too. <laughs> it really has, both of those things. So 
So I'm hoping to get a little more stuff done this weekend and then uh, I really, really want to get some of those t-shirts done. I just haven't had a, a chance to do that quite yet. Alright, that wasn't that poofy there. Eh, it'll feel poofy, especially once I cut this away. Once it's in our quilt, too, it'll feel like that. Gosh, there really are a lot of little loops on here. Alright, so now I'm going through a seam allowance and a whole pile of stuff here. Now this one goes kind of down lower here. I'm going to make a big leap. I keep putting this on and off, but it is... Oh, I suppose I could just leave it on. I was going to say it is a little annoying to stitch with it on, but... Oh well. I think I'm still going to just set it on the table here. Oh, that's what my mom always says, <laughs> and I need to take take a break. Yep, we just go from the warehouse to home every day. Our own little bubble of the car to the office to the car to home. Oh, <laughs> puzzles for the embroidery of the month. That would actually be kind of a really fun embroidery, wouldn't it? That would actually be a fun embroidery to like, <laughs> to play around with different, um, different number of strands because you know you could do a fuzzle when i say fuzzle that's like all the little strands of thread that get everywhere and that stick to your shirt and everywhere else um but like an embroidery like that you could do like a bunch of little one strand of f flosses then it would look really really um thin and itty bitty and then you could have a couple thicker threads and just a variety of change the thicknesses of of the um number of strands of threads that you stitch with all right there we are I am still trying to do kind of big stitches. I'm really liking this uh, pink, this mauve. And I like how weird this shape is. Like it's not a perfect circle. It's kind of like just a scribbled uh, circle. And I think it's just looking really pretty. So we're almost around again, and we're almost out of thread, but not quite. I think this will take maybe one more pass of thread, because we're getting smaller and smaller now, so it uses less thread, less floss. Um, I, th I don't think it'll be, I think I'll actually have to like the stabbing method, I'm, you know, I, I, in theory, have to pull it through even more. Um, you know, I have to pull it all the way through down and then all the way through back up, whereas the sewing method, I can just kind of get it all at once. Uh, I don't think it would make it easier to pull through. I really think it's because I'm using six strands of floss, which is pretty thick, and I'm going through a whole pile 
of fabric. I'm going through the batting, which really shouldn't be too bad uh, for embroidery, but I'm going through, it's this, it's this fabric. It's just a tightly woven, um, nice piece of uh, quilting fabric. And that's just tightly woven, especially for six strands. If I did three strands, I wouldn't be having this issue. Oh, it's actually not that bad. Once I have this on and I'm gripping that needle, it's, it's, I don't think it's really putting any pressure on anything. So that, so it's been kind of nice. I know this is totally an odd, odd uh, accessory today, this little glove. But I think it's, this is actually going pretty well. It'll get really poofy once you get to the middle there. So I've done this before with some batting behind. Oh, we might do this again sometime. Uh, but I've used like larger stitches and, and yarn and you can really tell the poof then. Um, so I've uh, put just like, a, you know, like a big design. So kind of like the, the hedgehog that's behind me doing that on a, a large piece of batting. That's kind of fun. All right, let's, I think this is it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this into the back and we will weave in that end. Yeah, the stabbing method that, I don't think that would have helped much. Oh, you wear a glove like that sometimes too to for a better grip. Yeah, it's it's uh it's working well here. It it really is. It's it's how tightly woven that quilting weight fabric is and then just like I'm using really fat thread. I'm using all six strands. And the reason I'm doing that is cuz I want a thicker looking line. And that's one way to get that is to use more more strands. <laughs> we're getting there, you guys. I think we'll go a little bit more tonight. Um we're almost done here, but um, I don't think we'll quite get this done tonight, but we're we're getting there. All right, this goes. I'm trying to, I'm like losing the line a little bit. All right, I'm gonna sketch this in a little bit. So this one goes down here and then loops here, and this one kind of loops around here. That's the part I'm missing. That loops around here and finishes it up. Okay. All right, I think, yeah, we'll go on this side. Oh, what's the time there? It is, um, what is it? It's about nine, it's approaching 9.30 right now. PM, 9.30 PM. You are up early, early, early. And we're ready to go again. Maybe I'll trim this off tonight yet too. All right, we'll start there. I think I'll just keep that glove on. That was working pretty well. Oh man, Irene. I would not be doing well if I was still up. I'm super happy with this color choice. Um, it, it it's making all the rest of the colors feel a little bit more okay for me. 
Because if you haven't noticed, I've been pretty unsure about these colors that we picked, but again, they're the best I could do, I think, to try and get a mauve feel. Oh, that's good, Irene. I feel like every once in a while I'm hitting something in that batting or I'm I'm going through the batting just weird enough that it it's being tough to to pull through too. So it's not just the it's not just this quilting weight fabric. It's that I'm going through all that batting too. Uh, the linen's fine. Uh, Gretchen's wondering how the linen's holding up. Um, if I would do a really long thread, I know it would start wearing away and probably break. But since I'm doing, I'm not doing more than 24 inches, um, it's good enough. The linen is, is kind of fun. I don't know what I originally got the linen for. I mean, I, this is decades old linen too, probably. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't remember my original purpose for it. But one thing is that it's not as shiny as that nice, like, mercedized cotton, cotton floss. That's all just really shiny always. But I think that's okay. I don't have to be too picky. Oh, yeah, uh, this would definitely be easier with a, a quilting or a, like a, a, a hand quilting needle. I was thinking about that like oh on this batting like this is kind of like I'm hand quilting but yeah there's no way I'd be able to get all this floss through and it's really the needle is going through fine it's right here at the end because it's basically 12 strands of fl floss and an eye of the needle that have to pop through it's this this thickness right there that um is the difficult part. But we're getting there. And this part's gonna be way easy because this is just so loose, this this fabric. I think that's just gonna be that's gonna be real nice to stitch through. Oh, I would kinda like to just finish this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go until this thread is done tonight. Hopefully it's all the way to that finished loop, but it feels like it's running out pretty quick. So I don't know if this is looking all that poofy right now, but I don't know. I think it, I think it's going to give it a little something. I think once this quilt is done, you're going to be able to tell that it's a little, little poofy, a little poofier there. Oh, he's tweeting at 4 a.m. Nice. Yeah, it's interesting. You hear about a lot of countries, or you hear about some countries a lot, but you don't hear anything about other countries. Like, I don't think we've heard about Greece at all here. Um, so that's, that's interesting to hear where you guys are at with everything. Uh, it's all just, ugh. We FaceTimed with my parents yesterday for a little bit just while we were co cooking dinner and ugh, just want to go visit them. We're trying to figure out, well, how can we actually do that? They have a camper that we might stay in, which would be kind of fun. But I don't know. I don't know when that'll happen. Because we're all trying to be pretty careful. Oh, nice, Harry. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's similar, Irene. I, I um I got a couple new swimsuits. I've been trying. I've been swimming at the Y, and I 
I stopped for a little, I've been trying to get back into it. And I got some new swimsuits because my old ones, like swimsuits, if you swim, if you're like doing lap swimming and, and all that every day, they degrade pretty quickly because of the chlorine. So I had just gotten some new swimsuits and then all this went down. So I have like some poor little new swimsuits that, uh, aren't getting used in the pool right now, which is a bummer. Probably not even gonna fit in them by the time we're done with the, <laughs> done with all this and I can use it again. And I don't know, uh, we're definitely gonna be the people that stay back a little bit longer. And uh, I don't know, we've seen some people who have been sick and it, it's not really something I want to gamble with because it's it's not good even if you're not getting to not going to the hospital if it's not bad enough to be at the hospital or anything it still can be pretty horrible I'm thinking so that's what yeah not visiting family I know Gail that's that's the worst Oh, at least the gyms suspended your membership. They we tried to suspend ours, and uh, they uh, we did end up we were able to delay it for six months and just pay a smaller fee. But they that took some finagling. They didn't want to. Oh, they didn't. They didn't. Sus maybe they're doing that now. But when we were doing when we asked about it, they did not want to suspend our membership. Oh, you love lap swimming too, Yolanda. Oh, that's awesome. I, I'm really missing it. I've I've been thinking about it. And I, you know what? We talked about this. I've been missing it specifically because of all the bleach. <laughs> so anytime we clean something with, with some bleach, as we've been doing um, lately, oh, it just smells like the swimming pool. It's like, oh, swimming bleach. <laughs> so I kind of like that smell. We talked about um, who hates and likes that, that bleach smell the other night. Ooh, I think I'm gonna have just enough thread for this. Ah, I love when that happens. Uh, but yeah, it's making me wanna wanna swim. Yeah, yeah, we got it like a delay. We couldn't cancel without it being a whole thing not but now i mean i think that was a little bit before they fully canceled the ability to go there and all their marketing was like thanks for continuing to support the y and all that which is which is great and we'll go back it's just that's a pretty big expense to not be using for us so uh, and it sounds like they're using the y now for uh daycare for um, nurses and first responders and stuff. So that's, that's great. I, that's a good use of it. I think about, uh, two more stitches and we'll be done here. So that worked super great. That, um, that Cyril paper to transfer this. Pretty stoked about that. So we'll have a little kind of bumpy nubbin in the, in the middle here. So that's cool. Adding that chapunto effect to it. And then uh, I'll trim I'll trim the batting in the back yet tonight. Oh, I'm happy we got this done. So tomorrow we'll stitch the Verona on the bottom. And uh, I think that'll be pretty cute. I think that'll be easier than, than our stitching tonight. Yep, Kathy, that's that's how we're feeling. I know a lot of people are just like, meh, this is nothing. Um, you know, we're not taking that approach. I, we're, I just, you know, there's too much to risk. And we'll just see how it goes. All right. Uh, last stitch. All right, let's weave that in. Let's trim the excess, and uh, we will have this little little guy done here. This little mauve sunrise. I'm calling it a sunrise. 
my colors don't seem so goofy if I think about it as a sunrise, I think. Oh, you lived at the Y a lot when, when you were little. I did too, for sure. I had a uh, daycare there, I think, when I was really little and um, took swim lessons at the Y. All right, I'm gonna grab my bigger scissors. I think there it is. All right, so I'm gonna just trim around here. Ooh, gosh, maybe I'm gonna use the little one. I'm a little nervous to use that big one. So I'm just leaving like a little quarter inch or so here. Maybe a little less. Try not to cut my finger or the fabric. All right, I can tell I'm in concentration mode. I stop talking. There's cutting involved. There, maybe this is an easier way to do it from this side. There we go. All right, so we just trimmed the outer edge a little bit there. I mean, it's a little poofy, but we're gonna be quilting this and stuff too. So uh, ultimately, we will probably quilt around this, which will make it like a little extra poof, which is the point. That'll be kind of fun. We have a little extra poofy sunshine here. <laughs> and it does. You can you can see there it just adds a little bit more texture. Uh, I don't know if you can kind of you can kind of see that. I think again, once we have it quilted, it'll really kind of poof out. But there, I, I, I'm I'm digging this mauve. I really think that brought this together for me. Uh, so here's here's where we're at now. And uh, tomorrow we'll take. This pink here, I think I'll do all six strands again, um, and we'll we'll write in that that Verona, and we'll use we won't use the red. So here's here's that red serral paper. You can see the design in it when it's done. Um, I'm gonna use my my white because it's gonna be against that black. So again, this is that that serral wax free transfer paper, the sampler. The sampler has all these five colors in. And I'm telling you, I've had this for decades, at least one decade and uh, you know, it's still working. So uh, you can stick it in your stash. All right, digging it. I'm gonna flip you guys around. We'll call it an evening. There we go. So let me show you how this is looking from far away. It's always looks a little di different. Oh, I think that that's just the right value. So uh, it's not too, it's, it's dark enough that you can see it against this white, but it's not too dark that it appears just like black in the background. I think it's nice and subtle. I think it's actually pretty dang cute. <laughs> All right, and that Verona, that that text of the Verona is just gonna finish this off. So I am happy about that. You're amazing how you took these four fabrics and made it something beautiful. Well, <laughs> this one was a challenge for me. I mean, it took me a long time to pick those colors, but I really do think this, um, this kind of mauve little sun is pulling it together a little bit, uh, which is kind of fun. I'm excited about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks again, you guys. Uh, again, last week uh, to get the embroidery of the month and uh, new embroidery month on Friday. So see you guys tomorrow. I'll get this up on YouTube and it'll be up in a few minutes here. Good night.